everybody, welcome to the show, Breaking Bread. This is about people, and we're talking about more than just sports, entertainment, and business. But you know what? We're all going to talk about everything from serious matters to fun and light. Uh, yeah. I know one thing we're going to do at Breaking Bread, we're going to try and figure out a way to have conversations to let you know about the real stuff that's taking place. It won't be about the fluff, but you know what? We're going to give it to you the way we give it to you, and that's the way I do it. That's the way Lomas Brown does it. And definitely the way our guest that's joining us today will do it. Yes. So we want to welcome him to the show. Many of you may remember him as quarterback for the Detroit Lions. I remember him as my brother uh, from another mother. And <laughs> Lomas Brown's <laughs> favorite person to talk about post-career. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we want to welcome a good friend of ours, Scott Mitchell, to the show. Well, it's a pleasure being here. Uh, love meeting you guys again and talking about the good old days and uh, this will be a lot of fun, and and I'm really curious how you're gonna, how we're gonna eat and talk at the same time, but we'll figure that all out. Yeah, we'll, we'll always do that, Scott. Yeah. But you know what, Lomas likes to. to eat, so if you want to know how we came up with the name of the show called Breaking Bread, it was only because the little fellow now who came <laughs> up with that part of the show. Scott, you know we have to stay nourished, man. So a big fella has to keep his nourishment up. So that's why we got to talk. And we're going to eat, man. We're going we're gonna to nourish ourselves while we're talking. Let's do it. I, 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 love, I love the idea of this. Yeah. I really do. I appreciate you guys having me on. I think we have our best conversations, you know, over, over a meal, That's dinner, right. lunch, whatever it is. And, and, and it's just, it's real. And it's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a great conversation. So I'm looking forward to this. Hey, well, Scott, let's jump right on into it. I know everyone's interested to hear what we got to talk about with you today. Uh, but but tell us, like, what, what's Scott Mitchell up to today? What am I up to today? Yeah. Uh, so so I'm in broadcasting, just like you guys. I, I have a radio show I do here in Utah. I'm from Utah. I live here. Uh, I, 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 here's what I found, okay? When, when you get old like we do, uh, you have a lot to say, and you're just trying to figure out a platform to be able to say it, right? Because because a lot of these the, these young people today, they they really don't understand things. And so I've got a great platform. Uh, I I can share my my opinions, my feelings about sports, about life, about whatever it is. And uh, no one listens, but at least I can <laughs> vent it out. And uh, it's better than going to therapy because you know playing for the Lions. It was, it was like, I spent a lot of years in therapy and, and this might be my way of just kind of getting out some of that frustration and those old feelings. Well, I'm sure you have a whole lot to say. And, um, uh, I, I always like to come on, you know, the question I get asked the most, Scott is who was my favorite quarterback? Now, many people may not believe it or remember I played with, uh, I don't know, about 15 to 20 quarterbacks? I it was 17. 17? You mm -hmm. thought it was 17? I was 15. It was, yeah, it was 15 to, gosh, at least close to 20 quarterbacks. I mean, I can just start rolling them off from Chuck Long to Eric Kramer, Rodney Pete, Andre Ware, Don Mikowski, Frank Wright, uh, Dave Craig, wow. Kent Graham, uh, who am I missing? Charlie Batch, Mike McMahon, yeah. Stoney Case, <laughs> I oh mean, Ty, Ty Detmer, uh, Corey Sauter. Uh, <laughs> That's a shame. Uh, it's, it's a few of them I'm, I'm missing up in there, but I even think Jim Harbaugh was there for a little bit. He was <laughs> right at the end part of his career, but they always ask me, who was the favorite guy? And you and I, we talked about it. Uh, fans may want to ask themselves this. I went to four Pro Bowls. Three of those were one of those quarterbacks. Scott so, Mitchell. There you go. Am I supposed to guess who it was? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, well, I didn't know if you wanted to guess, but I know you pretty, you, you already take credit for, uh, for all my Pro Bowl years, but... Uh, I can tell you this, Herman, and this, this, is, this is the truth. Um, there, was, there was a connection we had, and, and I never experienced it in, with any other team, any other player, and, it, it, and, and I tr I've tried to describe this to people, and, and it's almost unbelievable, but I could look at you on the field in the middle of a game, and, and there, was no, there was no hand signals, there was no whatever, audible, and it was it was a look and and like we would just connect and and it was this i don't know symbiotic relationship and i just knew what you were going to do and i knew you knew what i was going to do and 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 it was it was a uh, that and, and you see these quarterback wide receiver uh tandems and and how they have that connection and it's 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 working with each other uh, uh you know for so long and then and then you have the opportunity to to kind of just 
play like it's not even a conscious way of play it's just it's just the strangest thing but it was one of the coolest things i ever experienced i know you know what i'm talking about herman oh, yeah. it's one of the co coolest things i ever experienced in my in, in entire career it just it was almost like we were just an extension of one another yeah so scott and you did have a couple other little fellas in the huddle with you like brett perriman all oh, yeah always remember brett asking for the ball and he didn't ask in a nice way i always remember brett standing there asking scott throw me the ball when you gonna get me the ball and stuff so it was good how you dealt with all those different personalities especially some of those strong personalities that we had in the huddle well we we were not short on personality that's for sure <laughs> i mean and it was funny with brett because brett i love throwing the ball to brett there believe me he was amazing i mean yeah. i i wish there were more footballs to go around because because i gotta throw you know i mean i mean and then you had johnny morton who was the third third option and of course you know barry sanders that's a that's a whole different conversation the funniest thing though i remember about uh brett was he wouldn't get in the huddle this is in the game and I go, Brett, you got to get in the huddle. He says, why? You're not going to throw me the ball anyways, <laughs> right? And I said, fine. I said, just line up and just don't go off sides then. You know, it's like, all right, I can play this game too. But but he was, you know, Brett, Brett was a very underrated receiver. Yes. And I and I, I know for, for me, um, we were a really good football team. And and, and I and it, it was it, the, one of the frustrations of my life is I wish they would have given us more time. And, and look, winning a Super Bowl and 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 being uh, effective in the playoffs—that's a hard thing to do. I mean, it, it, I mean, Tom Brady makes it look easy, but Peyton Manning went five five or six years before he ever won in the playoffs. And I just wish they would have kept that group together uh, longer to really give us a chance because I I think we could have done it. I really do. I, and I'll say that till the day that I die. Now we all have egos and. And maybe Brett felt he could be better somewhere else in the Lions. Who knows? But I just really hoped that that, that group could have could have been together a lot longer. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree with you on that. I mean, you, you thought you start talking about a guy like Brett. I, I always tell people it's, it's impossible for me to have the career and the 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 statistics and the success that I had without having a player like Brett Perriman who was on yeah. the other side and. And Brett and I, we went after each other all the time. And I do remember this. We, we had one time, Scott, you are gotten injured. Don Mikowski comes in uh, for Chicago, and we were playing on the road in Chicago. And I remember I turned into Brett Perriman in that game because I only had like a couple passes thrown my way. So I was like irate. I was upset. You know, I was, I was that receiver. And then Johnny and Brett, and we all had this, this meeting, this team meeting, and, and all hell broke loose because all of a sudden I was like, well, why, you know, Don, why weren't you throwing me the ball? I was a number one receiver on that play or these plays. And then Brett and Johnny would say, now you see what it feels like now that you don't have Scott in the huddle. <laughs> and then all of a sudden Johnny jumped in and was like, hey, Brett, you know what? You're right, man. Hey, Herman, Brett's right like that. And all of a sudden the whole, that's when it all fell apart. But um, great times, man, great teammates. I, I was going to ask you this. So when you were here, everybody knew about you coming from Miami to come to Michigan. I always wondered, was that the only offer or did you have other offers to come to go to go to other teams and play and and why did you pick Detroit so that time in the history of the NFL was right at the beginning of free agency so it was it was it was like completely new and uh you had to be four years you, you had to have played four years which it was the end of my fourth year and I I, I came in and played for Dan Marino and uh, a lot of people were like, why don't we trade Dan Marino? I mean, we've got this guy that's playing amazing. Uh, why, why do we want to do that? And at the end of the day, they were, they, they were willing to re-sign me, but they weren't going to trade Marino. And I was like, well, let's see what the open market is. And, and I literally uh, narrowed it to five teams. There probably would have been more. One of them was actually Chicago. There was uh, Minnesota, Detroit, the New Orleans Saints and the, the Rams who were in Los Angeles at the time. And the funny thing happened, I was, I was in Kevin Colbert's office, right, with the Lions. And Kevin, who is now the GM for the Pittsburgh Steelers, a phenomenal guy, great at, at assessing talent and really was, was a big part of the success the Lions had, no question. And I was sitting in Kevin's office, he says, look, we really like two quarterbacks. We like you and we like Eric Kramer. We had Eric here, we really liked him. 
And, and, and so we'll be happy with either one of you. Well, my agent is sitting in the meeting. He steps out because he gets a phone call and he comes back about five minutes later, whispers in my ear. He says, hey, uh, Eric Kramer just signed with the Bears. So I was the only option that the Lions had at that point, which, you know, gives you all the leverage. But it was really, it, it really boiled down to me between uh, Minnesota and Detroit. And, and, there, and there was a lot of similarities between the two, the two teams. But I just felt like the Lions were more committed to, to me. I felt like the team could win right now. And, and, and I, you know, so I was, for me, it was like, it was almost like uh, it wasn't even much of a decision. I felt it was clear, you know, what, what kind of team uh, could, we could have and be. And, and uh, so it, it, it actually became easy. The, the hard part, and it really was hard. Like it, it really wore on me how, um, like I couldn't go out publicly anywhere. Uh, it, you know, it was just really hard. It was hard to be the center of all that because everyone was like, well, now we have a quarterback and we're on our way kind of thing. And, and uh, uh, it, it, was, it, was, it was a challenging time in my life. And, and quite frankly, looking back on it, I was too uptight. Seriously, yeah. like, like that, I, really, I was like, I just, you know, I wanted to win so bad. I wanted to win like, like more than I want to breathe. And, 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 it, and it was frustrating when, you know, it wasn't kind of going completely the way, the way that I wanted it. Uh, and, and, and I just, I, I just look back on some things and I, I go, that, that, that's not my personality. And look, look, there's this, this elephant in the room, you know, like Lomas, Threw me under the bus on ESPN, right? <laughs> you know we got you, to you talk know, about you know, that. You know we were going to talk you know about it, but you want to go ahead and that. jump right on to it, man. I'm going I'm to go ahead and tag you in, so go ahead. <laughs> Throw me under the bus like that? Yeah, I'm going to talk. But here's the thing, Lomas. I was playing terrible in that game. Like, it was – seriously, like, I, I wasn't playing that good. And, and, uh, and you know, and, and I don't want to get into why and why not, but I was having a bad day. And, uh, man, I – you know <laughs> – Maybe you should have taken me out, whatever. But uh, I just, there, there were times when, I, you know, looking back, I, and again, I, you know, I wish we would have had more time together than we, we actually did. But, but I, was, I was way too uptight. Yeah. Seriously. Uh, talking about that, since we're on that subject, uh, when I inserted my foot in my mouth, um, go back to that, Scott. I, I just remember after me and you talked, after the media just got this, uh, it was just a media blitz. I mean, they were killing me on ESPN and they called you and everything. I just remember that time me and you talked and the first thing you said to me was like, Lomas, I knew you didn't do that because you remembered the play and everything. And we talked about that. And I'll tell you now, that made a world of difference because, man, I was catching it. You thought you you had called it, man. I was catching it from every end about that statement that I made. But I think, like I said, the most comforting thing that came out of that was when me and you actually ended up talking. And you were like, well, I knew the play that you were talking about, and you didn't do that and stuff. So, you know, it was just, it was just a great lesson. And that just lets you know, who your friends really are. So I, I, I just wanted to let you know that I appreciate you for that moment there because, like I say, man, that was, ooh. That can, I, can I jump in? Go ahead. Can I jump, jump in? on I, in. Well, now, now, Scott, you know. While I'm eating my chicken, it, it, I'm eating my shawarma here, chicken here, let too. Me, let, me, let me jump in. So here, here's, a, here's a real question to Lomas. Uh-oh. Let me clear my mind. I know you say you put your foot in your mouth and that you, you actually found out you didn't do it. You talked to Scott about it. My question to you would be, um, would you have done it if you could? <laughs> would you actually, if you thought you did it, would you well, actually had? Now, now, I'm not throwing you up under the bus. Right, right. But I'm just, I'm just curious. Well, I wasn't that good of an actor, <laughs> so I, I don't think I could have got away with that. But that would be like me saying, you know what, it, man? He's gonna throw me the ball. I'm just gonna drop it. Yeah. I'm just gonna drop it because I don't care. I'm not even going to get off this jam. <laughs> no, nah, but it, it, it was. It was rough, man. Scott knows, man. It, it was rough at that time when we were going that part of the game. I think we were down. And, man, I think the frustration level was high at that point. And 
you know, like I say, I, no, because my, my nature is protection. Is that what it is? Be protective. So that's my nature. You know, just like in the movie The Blind Side, the Big blind, Mike. Yeah, the blind side. Yeah, that, he was, so that was my nature. But, yeah, it was it was a lot going on. But to answer your question, Herman J., I don't think I would have did. All right, that, that, nah. That's a good man. I know yeah, you. I know you would. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, you know, when you, when you play professional football, like there's a standard that you just live up to. And wh whether your team's good or bad or, or you're having a bad day or whatever, you're every, I know everyone's out there trying to do the best that they, they can. And I would never in a million years think that a player would do, would disrespect themselves, would disrespect the game and, and, and do that. I mean, I mean, I, you know, I look, I had a, I, I didn't like Bobby Ross. Okay. Like with a passion. And when I left Detroit and I was in Cincinnati, we were in a, we were in a preseason game. And I had, I had planned against the Lions. So I'm playing Cincinnati. We're playing the D Detroit Lions. We're in Cincinnati. It's a preseason game. It doesn't even matter, right? It's a preseason game. And I had schemed in my head that I was going to, on, on, a, on a certain down, I was going to drop back and I was going to throw the ball right at Bobby Ross. <laughs> and, and I'm and like de I'm dead serious about this. Man, I was so mad at him. And 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 the, the moment came in the game. I said, I'm going to do it right here. Like I don't care. It's first down. Whatever. It's a preseason game. I do not care. I want that man to know I'm not happy about what happened. Scott, and I couldn't. And I couldn't. Man. And I couldn't do it. I couldn't yeah. do it, even in that situation. So, you know, as much as I wanted to, and 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 honestly, Lomas, you probably should have. Really, I mean, I wasn't playing that good in the game. I mean, you really should have. And so, so I get it. But I, I just, you know, I understand why why you were telling the story and and the frustration and the conversation and and you'd like to do that kind of stuff because uh, you know because you you go out on the field and you're busting your butt out there. And if you don't feel like everyone else is pulling their weight in it, you don't want them on the field. And I get that. I, I would feel the same the same way about about a teammate. And and I probably vocally said it to people at times where man, you gotta you gotta pull it up. You gotta you, you gotta get it together here. And so so I, I'm not I'm not faulting you at all for uh, for feeling that way at the time. Really, I. Hey Scott, man, you can go ahead and fault him, man. Don't don't worry about all that. <laughs> don't be afraid of him. We got MMA, man. You see all the the celebrity boxing and all the celebrity yeah. stuff going on. You and Low, <laughs> pay per view. I'm 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 there. Just y'all gonna you put know, on like you the gonna be there? you gonna put on just the one piece. You and Scott, Scott, you come out looking like you know just the, the one thing, and Lomas comes out. No, what, what am I looking like? Mean? That's what I want to know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. man, yeah. I pay five dollars. I mean, oh, that's it. Yeah, I'm gonna pay about five dollars. Oh, that's you know, all, Scott. I, it hey, ain't even worth. They gave it. they gave Scott and Barry all the money, so I I no, I don't I don't have any. I, I wouldn't be able to afford anything more than that. So, <laughs> just so you know, my agent wanted to actually sue you. Oh man, where's your agent at? You going to get him? Yeah, it might be between me and his agent now. Yeah. No, no, no. He he was like, and it was it I and it wasn't you. It was like ESPN. It's like, and, and I'm like, I'm not going to go out. That's crazy. I mean, you're it, like, you're crazy. I'm not going to do that. But I'm telling you, he was, he was hot about it, Lomas. He was hot about it. So I, I, I'm going to tell you something I hadn't really told anybody. So that morning before I went out on ESPN, they had actually found the play. So they found the play. They seen the play. So they brought me in the office at ESPN and they were like, Lomas, is this the play that you were talking about? And my mouth was wide open because I was like, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I'm blocking the hell out of my guy. And it was just the free guy that came off the end. Well, it was Barry's guy is who yeah. it was. Well, and you know, you know, Barry can't block. <laughs> <laughs> well, ESPN... They wanted the ratings, so that's all they were concerned with. So they just told me, well, we're not going to show the play, scrap it. We still want you to go out with the apology tour. And silly me, I'm thinking, well, that's my way up the ladder in ESPN. This is going to endow me to the uh, big wigs in ESPN. And like I say, I knew before I went out there on the show the next day 
that because they had showed me the play, and I'm sitting there, and I, I'm, you know, Herm, the mind is a powerful thing. You know what I'm saying? It will make you think you're doing things that you. I ain't got nothing to do with this. I'm well, just gonna sit there and eat I'm my food. I'm just saying, man, because your mind is kind of bad too. You know? Why so, my mind got to be I bad? I don't know, man. I just wanted to throw you under the bus while so, we So, eat. Scott, listen. Lomas is talking about we're eating. Lo, tell us real quick, and then I want Scott. Won't you tell us first, man? What, yeah. are, what are you eating? What are you chowing down on? Oh, so. So I'm trying to look like Lomas, and <laughs> and uh, I've been on a, a special eating program for the last two months. I lost 55 pounds, and it's not Nutrisystem, all right? Sorry here. <laughs> okay. But so I get a meal a day that's so this is two cups of vegetables, and it's uh, broccoli. It's so it's just basically vegetables and and then chicken breast, and so I'm allowed a certain amount of protein a day certain amount of vegetables and and then i supplement it with some other special things but I'm, I'm kind of on a on a special program here and i got a long way to go but when the, when i get there you guys won't even recognize me so. what is this nutrition wait, wait. prison yeah. I mean, yeah. man. no no <laughs> fruit no so fruit allowed on? no fruit allowed with that scott well that's food right yeah so 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 no butter pecan ice cream no uh no cake all that bread you guys got. No there, donuts. It's amazing. Pizza, it's out. None of, yeah. No sugar, low carb. So so I, I, I got the question. I want to ask you, because we've seen you on TV. How was that? How was it going through The Biggest Loser? How was that? How was that experience? What, what did you learn from that experience? How, how was that? Uh, I didn't want to go on the show. Like I, I, I didn't seek it out. No one came to me and said, "Hey, would you be interested in this?" It just, it was, it was a complete accident. They had a, an open audition here in Utah, and, and I, and I, and they said just submit an online application and show up at the audition. And so I, I just kind of jokingly, typed up a, a an audit or a, you know, just a, an application online and sent it. Never went to the audition, nothing. They called me two weeks later and they said, are you really serious about coming on the show? And I'm like, why would I want to go publicly and and take my shirt off and show my big old white belly to people <laughs> on national television? Like, I don't want to do that, right? Like, like it was like like when, when you had your whole thing on ESPN and I, I was like, I don't want to come back in the public anymore. I just want to be a nice private citizen and just leave me alone kind of thing at the time. And and uh, and and uh, my dad, my dad passed away from being overweight, essentially. And and he had passed away a couple of months before I, you know, this this came along. And I just kind of felt like maybe he was guiding me in that direction. Like, you know, you don't you don't have to be overweight. You can figure out a way to 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 live a healthy lifestyle. I went on the show. It was amazing. Unbelievable. You know, just just an incredible experience. But at the end of the day, it's a it's a game show, right? Someone at the end of the show was going to win about a quarter of a million dollars, and so you know I'm competitive. I want to I want to win, but I also had this really cool personal experience on the show that that wasn't even a part of the show, and it, and it was kind of connecting to my dad in a way that was really special to me, and uh, so I, I had a, a, a great time. I was told before I went on the show from my personal doctor. He, it's unhealthy how you lose the weight on the show. And so you're probably going to gain it back, which is what happened. And so I'm kind of fighting to, to get back there again, which I'm, I'm doing a pretty good job on. But I lost 126 pounds in four months. So it was, it was a pound a day on the show. And it was insane. I was working out eight to 10 hours a day and eating and, and you know, super healthy. And I, mean, I was like 1,600 calories a day. So... Uh, it was insane, but I really, I'd do it again, believe it or not. I'd do it again in a minute if I had the opportunity. You know, Scott, every, every time we're on the show, we had Jason Hansen on here previously, and we have guests all the time. But when you come on, you always got to give us a funny story. You got to tell us something <laughs> that the fans wouldn't know unless you shared it with them uh, that would, you know, keep them kind of excited about it. So I'm going to give you an opportunity to tell us one of your fun stories being here in Detroit. How does Jason Hansen have an interesting story? That's Jason, man. Listen, <laughs> just kick the ball. It's like, I, I, I you know, Jason kudos to you guys. If you got, if you got a funny story out of Jason Hansen, you guys, you guys got to go on. You, you, you would think that, man. He's hilarious. We, uh, 
it was a Thanksgiving game, right? You know how fun those games were. Uh, it was the only time I was in Detroit we actually lost. It was the Kansas City Chiefs. And and the, the media was out for blood. Like, they could sense that this is the end of Wayne Fonts. And so they had a rather extensive interview with, with Coach Fonts after the game. So I'm all dressed, waiting for the media to come around my locker, and they don't show up. And I, I mean, I mean, the game is long gone. And I'm, and finally, I'm just like, I'm, I'm going to leave. So I leave the locker room and, and my family, I'm waiting, you know, my family wait outside the locker room, you know how it was. And, and I go outside, my family's not even out there. So I'm like, wow, what, what do I do? So I, I'm like, well, they, they, they watched the game up in a suite, right? Cause they couldn't be in the stands cause people were too ruthless. So they had to be in a suite, you know, to, to actually watch the game. And, and so I, I go up the elevator and I start walking along the upper concourse in the Silver Dome. And there's still a few fans trickling out from the game. And as I'm walking along, I'm like, man, this might not have been the best idea, right? Because <laughs> they're going to know who I am. Well, I walk by four guys. They, they pass me in the corridor. And, and as they pass me, they recognize who I was. And they go, Mitchell, you suck. <laughs> and, and, you know, and I'm like, whatever you know so just kind of blow it off you know how it is what and i go in and right as i pass them i go in the suite where my family was supposed to be and they're not there so i said you know what i've had it with these people i'm tired of like i don't suck and i'm gonna go tell this guy what i think about him so i turn around and i i go back in the corridor and i start chasing four guys down in the silver dome <laughs> and they go in the they go in the bathroom and they don't know I'm behind them, right? They just, you know, they're just minding their business. So I get up to the bathroom and, and it's just an opening. There's no door. So you walk in, you turn to the right, and then you turn to the left. And there's, there's like urinals and there's stalls and some sinks. And there was nobody in the bathroom. And I'm like, where'd these guys go? And so I just make a general statement. And I said, does anybody in here have a problem with me? And all of a sudden, the four stalls open, the doors swing open, <laughs> like out of a Western or something. This is just crazy. And these guys walk out, right? And they go, yeah, we got a problem with you. And so I start talking to these guys, and I talk to them, like, logically. Like, you guys couldn't last a play on the field. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know how hard this is. And they're like, for $5 million a year, I could, I could <laughs> ask to play. And so I'm like, all right, I see where this is going. And then the, the, the first guy goes, you want to hit me, don't you? And I said, I do. And, and I, in my mind, I'm telling you guys, in my mind, I, I was gone. I was probably, I, I don't know what was going to happen, but I was, I was going to take on these four guys in the bathroom in the silver dome. And, and in the back of the, the restroom, and, and the, there appeared a cleaning, a, a, like a cleaner that was going to, it was cleaning the bathroom. So he had a cart and he, and he was standing there and he goes, Scott, you need to walk away. And, and I'm like, I'm like, where did you come from? Because <laughs> you weren't even in the bathroom. Right. <laughs> and, and I'm like, and I just said, you're right. I do. I just need to walk away. And I said, I'm going to walk away. And the four guys were looking at me like, you're talking to yourself here. You're like this. And I just, and I walked out of the bathroom. So you, hey, you, you were going to take on all four of the guys. I was going to take on all four of the guys, and I'm telling you, it probably would have been really bad. I just, <laughs> it, it, and I found out later that they didn't clean the bathrooms after the games. Like, they came in the next day to clean the bathrooms, and so there, sh there, there should have never been someone in the bathroom. Clean. So I have a guardian angel out there who cleans bathrooms at the Silver Dome. That's all I know. But, but Scott, if it was like the Western, man, why didn't you just invite him outside the saloon? You know, like, hey, come outside. We'll meet you out here. We're going to have a showdown. Right. Y'all going to take it on inside, of, right inside, huh? You want to just go outside the bathroom? Just... Come on, man. In the moment, I just, you know, I didn't, I really didn't think beyond this is going to be ugly and bad and, and, and I'm going to just, but I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. Now, now, Scott, you know we used to see some hell of a fights in uh, the Silverdome, man. Standing on the sidelines, 
you just see some hell of a fights going on in the stands there, man. So there was always a fight or two on a Sunday afternoon game, yes. like at one o'clock. But you got yeah. those Monday night games where yes. people had all day long to tailgate. You'd see five or six just, oh, yeah. you know, Donny Brooks, you know, going on. <laughs> Actually, I think that might have been more exciting than the game yeah. for us, yeah. you know, as players, man. This is like, this is exciting here. What's going to happen tonight? Which section is it going to be? Yeah, once you can see past all the cigarette smoke and all the smoke up in there, Silverdome, man. Man, I think back to some of those times there, man, all the lung damage we were doing to ourselves, <laughs> people up in there smoking cigarettes and, oh, that my God. Of Vestos, huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was the biggest shock to me when I got in the NFL. I, I was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. We go into the locker room at halftime the very first game about 80% of the team lit up a cigarette. I mean, and that was just commonplace, you know? So it was, it was a different world back then. Yeah, they light up more than cigarettes these days. <laughs> <laughs> it was a whole different kind of smoke. <laughs> uh, but yeah, again, man, we appreciate you being on. And um, thank you so much, Scott, for joining us. And we look forward to spending more time with you here on Breaking Bread. And we'll catch you on the next one. Thank you. Love it. You guys are awesome. And really, it's just seeing you guys. That's what's great about it. Yeah. Really. It's just, it's just good to see you guys. Yeah, likewise. Appreciate you. Absolutely.